Yo, what is up guys, this is Tito back with another video and today in this video I am gonna be showing you how is the official resurrection remix from on Redmi Note 5 Pro. So without further delay, let's make it happen. First, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed. As you can see, the fingerprint scanner is working fine and unlocks the phone pretty much immediately. The whole user interface of this ROM feels water fluid and every animation looks flawless. As you can see, there are barely any frame drops, so the stock Android-ish UI looks awesome to me at least. So if you are a stock Android fan, you will love it too. I am using a modded pixel launcher over here. And let me be a little more aggressive over here and as you can see again the UI is buttery smooth and there are no mentionable lags or frame drops that I faced. And here is the quick settings panel. And yeah it does show the bluetooth device's battery and stuff. I was just listening to some music with the bluetooth headphones that I have and it works fine. But I have to say the sound output via the headphone jack the loudspeaker and the earpiece as well is a little bit on the lower side if you compare it to MIUI. But don't get me wrong, the sound quality is super fine over here. And if you go to the display settings and if you scroll down, you will see there is a new feature just been added which is the full screen aspect ratio feature for every app which is working fine so that more apps which are not yet optimized for 18-9 to displays can be viewed or used with the 18 to 9 full display without any black borders. So it's awesome that developers are working on Resurrection Remix pretty hard officially and I gotta appreciate the hard work of the official developers. So now let me talk about the camera. Well here we have which you may call the Snapdragon camera app as default camera. Well in my frank opinion it is just to get the job done. But the pictures over here are not anywhere close to stock MIUI camera app, so you have to keep that in mind. And if you are expecting portrait mode, well back off, it doesn't work over here unless you root it and you enable camera to API. But we do have 4K video recording support over here and image stabilization is working fine here too. So yeah, I have to say, if you are into shooting videos, you might give this one a try. And the image stabilization works for both front and rear cameras, but note that it doesn't work for 4K videos. Now it's time to jump into the customizations. If you are liking these animations, well it's a feature too, I'll show you later on. So first we have clock and date customizations, next we have network traffic, after that we have notification ticker, then we have battery, I did set it to big dotted circle and you have lot of other options and yeah. Battery bar is also present here. Next in system icons, you can enable Vault TE and 4G logo like I did. And yeah, Vault TE voice calls are working fine here. And sliding a finger on the status bar to adjust brightness works super fine here. In system UI tuner, you can enable icons like headset and stuff. From panels, you can set custom header image if you want to. And we have some other opacity controls for some pop-ups like in the power menu and stuff. Next we have quick pull down, yeah it does work, but I left it disabled because I love it on the stock side. And you can adjust quick settings panel, column and row numbers like this. And we do have option to scroll small quick toggles. And we do have option to show or hide quick toggle titles and the auto brightness icon is present here. And in advanced, we have the easy tile adding option, 
and some more stuff but these animations like the flip and rotate quick toggles simply does not work over here for me on the latest build so consider it as a very small little bug as you can see it does not work as you can see it only does the normal stock android animation it simply does not work with those flip and rotate animations you can set the transparency of quick setting panel from here in recents we have the clear all button which you can customize like you can even change this icon over here and we have free ram status on the top of the recent apps panel next we have some fingerprint options after that we have the ui blur options i have set the display size to small it takes a couple of seconds to open the display size no idea why you can change dpi if you want to disable heads up and from sound settings you can disable screenshot sounds and screen on notification sound and some other sound stuff if you feel those are annoying next up we have theming from here you can change the whole ui color to light or dark and even can adjust the accent colors so yeah next we have smart pixels well it kinda is important if you are really into saving battery what it does is it just disables some percentage of the pixels from your screen so that it saves the battery but the display resolution becomes straight potato so you have to keep that in mind and you can even set it to turn on with battery saver mode so yeah pretty cool feature after that we have expanded desktop in call vibration adjustments in misc we have the three finger gesture and stuff which does work fine in lock screen we have security over here we have option to enable face auto unlock which i'll be showing you on the later part of this video and we have advanced reboot from lock screen power menu option in lock ui you can enable charging info and some other cool stuff have a close look if you need to in buttons we have normal advanced reboot enabler for power menu again and yeah it does work as you can see we have advanced option and you can just go directly to fast boot or recovery and stuff and we have press and hold the power button to toggle torch and that too works super fine here in navigation you can customize the smart bar well why smart bar let me show you i did change the back and recent button position like this and google pixel like home button animations and heck you can set it to each button and you can even set the colors for each dots and you can set custom actions like i did with the recents button i set it the long press action to screenshot for the recents button and as you can see it works and you can customize the navigation button height if you want to like this And we have the pulse option, so if you play some music anywhere on the phone, it shows you the visualizations on the navigation bar like this. And you can even further customize the colors and all. Next we have animations and here are a ton of them. So you can pretty much customize the whole UI animations from here. And I set the screen off animation to CRT and it works fine as you can see. Double tapping on the status bar locks the screen and double tapping on the navigation bar locks the screen too. It's a smart bar feature. Pretty cool. Now let me show you the 8 gestures. Well, why I am not already using it? Because I feel that it doesn't work as it should. But it used to on the unofficial builds. I don't know why it's not working as it should right now. Well, let me show you why I am saying this. If you swipe up from the bottom, yes it gets you to the home screen. And if you just do it again and hold it, it simply does not open the recent apps panel, which is annoying. So it's definitely a bug and the developers may fix it in the future, but not working for me as of now. But if you open an app and swipe from the sides, yes, it goes back with either sides. So that's that, but the recent apps panel simply does not appear. So to me at least, gestures are not as much usable as it used to be. Next we have gestures anywhere feature and app circle bar and pie control.
and yeah you can check for updates from here and almost forgot to mention guys that yes notification led and all stuff like that is working super fine here in this rom so let me just show you the about section this is the 17th may 2018 build and of course running on android 8.1 here is the stock kernel of official resurrection remix for redmi note 5 pro and security patch over here is of latest may 5th 2018 and if i talk about the battery life as you can see i have 35 percent juice left right now and i got around six and a half hours of screen on time and as you can see the overnight battery drain is not that much but it started draining the battery pretty fast after 50 percent when compared to the time when it was above 50 and here are my app usage so yeah it can definitely last you a full working day with around seven and a half or more screen on time and i think that's enough note that no double tap to wake feature present here here is the boot animation for you if you are into that and native video calling simply does not work in this rom at least as of now you need to keep that in mind and yeah the night mode works super fine here no issues with those and we have the option to control the rgb colors of the screen and here is the face unlocking speed for you So, in my frank opinion, if you want a super stock android ish and super customizable ROM like its overstock Android, you can definitely try this ROM on your Redmi Note 5 Pro and it's pretty cool, I have to say. But if you want features like portrait mode and stuff, then you might have to stick with me. Why? Because the portrait mode is simply not working over here and as you can see over here in the default camera. There is not something like the portrait mode. You have this option. I don't know what's that, but yeah, you have these options. So you have to stick with me. Why? If you want to use the portrait modes, like great portrait mode pictures over here, if you want to enable portrait mode, you have to enable camera to API. Then you have to use like Google camera mods and stuff. It's a little bit of hassle, but yeah, you can do it either way. So I'll be making a video on that too in the coming days. If you want portrait mode really bad, stick with me why. But if you want to try out stock Android on your Redmi Note 5 Pro with a lot of features, then try out this ROM. It's pretty cool and it's pretty much a daily driver. I have no doubt on that. And one more bug that I have found that the Days app or any other banking apps is not working in this ROM even with Magis. So we might have to wait for a couple of more days get those things i guess maybe in the future with software updates they might fix it but even with magis this app or any other banking app simply doesn't work over here to be honest this rom is pretty much a daily driver for me so it gets a thumbs up from me so i can give it a solid 8 out of 10 at least right now because vaulty video calls doesn't work over here banking apps doesn't work portrait mode doesn't work so all other things like the performance and stuff is super fluid the gaming performance is really good i have played pubg and that went pretty fine no lags no frame drops or something like that so there you have it that wraps up this video guys thank you so much for watching hit the big thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel right here if you love my work and we are really really close to 4000 subscribers so if you haven't yet just do it this is Tito from Kerry and Tech signing off and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye now.